How many of you know that preventive maintenance is better than trying to play catch up? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever let something go for a long time and then when you finally got to it, you had to do double time to get it, to get it back to par? Mm -hmm. Not to get ahead, just to get back to par. <laughs> It's difficult when we let it slide. It's difficult getting back. So it is needful in order for our spiritual house to continue to grow and to be the place where the Holy Spirit comes to reside. It's, it's, it's getting much better and it's easier when we have an ongoing prayer life, an ongoing uh, life of righteousness, an ongoing life of sharing the love of God with other people. Amen. Sometimes, it's not enough to sit and wait for that homeless man to pass you across your path. Sometimes it's needful and necessary to go out and find him where he is. Right. Amen. To share the love of God with him. Because God is building a house that just for you. He has a program that's going on. He's working on something in you, in, within you and I. It is a house that he's building. And he, he looks in our houses sometimes, and he sees, well, okay, all right, bro, this needs to go on the gym now. Uh, I need to have uh, the city to come and pick this up. <laughs> because this I can't use, that I can't use. He only looks for the things that he can use, that he can draw out of our lives to be a blessing to somebody else. Now think about this. Think about your own life. I'm not asking for all the or answers, but just for your office. What if what you see in your life right now, would, would you like for somebody else to share it now? Or would you share what's going on in your life right now with somebody else? Would it edify them? Would it build their lives up? If they could take a peek into your life, could they see anything usable for God? That's a haunting question, isn't it? Because nobody knows me like me and God. Nobody knows you like you and God. And if you're like me, I would say, Oh, please, Holy Spirit, don't show any of this to anybody else. <laughs> I don't want them to lose their salvation because that pastor, to me, looks like he's backslidden. <laughs> Because there's some parts of our lives, all of our lives, that no, we, we don't care for anybody else to see all that, to do all that. No. And you know what? Sometimes it's not even bad things, it's not even simple things. Sometimes it's just a hindrance. It may not be a, it may not be necessarily a sin. It just may be, as Paul calls it, a weight. Something that's hindering you. Or something that's hindering you. Something that's keeping you from progressing to the next level of God. Something is keeping you from moving into the next level of grace that the Lord has prepared for your life. There is a sacrifice for the best materials. You don't just find them everywhere and anywhere. But you go to the choice places. The scripture said about Solomon when he built the, the, uh, the, the temple. He went to Lebanon. Lebanon is known for the giant trees, the giant redwood. Some of those trees are so big, they carve a whole highway through it. <laughs> but then he, he went into other lands where he knew where the forests were rich with pine wood, cedars. Cedar is a, is a kind of wood that just seems to last forever. Yeah. It just stands the test of time. Well, God takes the most, he takes the best of materials. setting up house inside of you and I. Because he's working on not just this house here in the earth. He's looking into eternity. He's saying when, when the life, when their life is ended on earth, I will have a house eternal in the heavens. A house that I will be that I will glory in. Is he happy about your house today? Can he see any glory in your house today? That's the only question, isn't it? 